Hello, really good to see everyone here. I'm really nervous, this isn't what I normally do. So I'm going to tell you about my story. It started with humble beginnings. I actually grew up on a council estate to two working class parents. My mum, a cleaner. My dad was a bit of a Dell boy. There was always random things around the house that he was buying and selling. But one thing he used to install amongst me and my brothers was that spirit of entrepreneurism. He always used to say to us, if you want to make a positive mark on this world, you've got to do your own thing. So, with that in mind, age 13, I set up my first business. We were called Bees Bunch. I wrote to my little brothers, got my cousins who were over from summer holidays, and we went round to all the houses and we pitched our services. We cleaned cars, we weeded gardens. It was great fun. We had that true sense of team spirit. And at the end of it, we earned some money as well, so that was fun. Um, I had a fairly conventional teens, and then went on to university. I graduated with a 2-1, and then I deep-dived into the corporate world to begin my career. I remember going from job to job, and always feeling like I didn't belong, like there was somewhere else I wanted to be. I always used to get that feeling of dread on a Sunday night and a Monday morning. But I didn't know where I should be and what I should really be doing. I felt really confused, actually. And it was only until I, I went to my first festival, my first music festival. For those that have been, it's The Great Escape. It's in Brighton. It's a multi-event festival that was amongst the, the action and the noise. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is the industry for me, the music industry. It was fast. It was dynamic. It was creative. It was passionate. It was everything I wasn't experiencing in my life right then. And I knew I had to make it my mission to get into this industry, and I was going to do it. I remember at the end of that weekend, caught up with my ex-boyfriend at the time, and I said, that's it, I've, I've figured it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the music industry. And he looked at me and said, B, you're in your late 20s. You're too old. It's too late for a career change. <laughs> So with that in mind, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm more determined than ever, purely to see the look on his face when it happens. So the weeks that followed, I went back into my job, and I created a master plan, a master plan of how I was going to get into the industry. I was going to open as many doors as it took to get into this industry. So over the weeks, I remember applying. applying. This, this notoriously is one of the hardest industries to get into. It's very closed door. Um, I think for every two, 300 emails I'd send, I'd maybe get one reply back. For all the paid positions I applied for, I'd always get the same reply. You've just not got the right experience or just not enough experience. And I had about eight years' worth of transferable skills at this point. Um, so I did what I always do. I did it myself. I thought, right, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to create a music blog. So that's what I did. I created a music blog. And from that, I then had ho managed to host my, my, a radio show, and from that, a podcast, and then from that, a live music night. And then it wasn't until I started managing a band, it was 2015 at the time, I was thinking, well, surely this is the way through into, into the industry, through the front door, I'm managing a band, and still they wouldn't let me in. So we got to a point, I think we would just re released our third single through a label, using a diff uh, marketing agency, and we were really frustrated. We felt like, yet again, we'd, we'd work with a label who just didn't get us, they just didn't care. And once again, we were left feeling disappointed, disheartened. And I remember going to bed that night thinking, God, this is horrible. And the next morning, I woke up, and it just hit me. I had an epiphany. I thought to myself, what if we could do away with these dodgy record deals. So at the time, for people that don't know, some, some record labels really ripped off artists. They took all their royalties and their rights. What if we could do away with that and give them all the tools they need to be truly independent, to provide them with a suite of services that allows them to pick and choose when they want to release, how they want to release, and get true results? And what if we created true entrepreneurs out of them allowed them to have a sustainable career 
that allow them to actually flourish and, and, and earn off their, their music. So this gave rise to my business, Liberty Music PR. Initially, I side-hustled the business, so I had my corporate job in the day, and I was doing this in the evenings and the weekends, and there came a point where I couldn't do the two, and I had to fully immerse myself. It was now or never, sort of in my mid-30s at this point, and I remember I went to the office, told my boss, I was like, right, that's it, I'm leaving. He thought I was mad. Um, he gave me his blessings, but thought I was absolutely mad. And of course, I had all the ne negative self-talk in my head. There are so many agencies out there. It's never going to work. No one knows who you are. But I thought, you know what? Nothing's as worse as not trying at all. So, so I did it. So I quit. And it was only until the final days of working my notice that I started to feel a little bit queasy. And I thought, oh, I better do a, do a pregnancy test. And lo and behold, I was pregnant. So not only was I about to embark on this brand new path into entrepreneurship and you know, founding a business, I was about to become a mother as well. So as anyone can imagine, those months that followed were really hard work, not only dealing with the physical, physicality of being pregnant, but also the fact that I had to work 10 times harder to really prove myself in that industry. I was underestimated, undermined, and undervalued so many times for being a pregnant woman. And I thought, no, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to do this purely for the artists. You know, the, I'm all about the independence and the artists, and I was creating a movement. But also, I had to do it for my daughter, too. So I'm really proud that. I kept on going, and in those early days of being a mother, it was a crazy mix of breastfeeding whilst taking Zoom calls, and, and a mad, crazy mix of running up to London, and, you know, with my partner, my co-founder as well, we were sort of tag-teaming with a baby, and it was... Um, but we made it work. And the business, it started to grow and grow and grow. And, and soon, sooner or later, more and more artists were coming to work with us. Those words started getting around that we, we were creating a movement. We were creating an air of independence, and more people wanted to get involved. They, they'd had enough of the, the sort of old-fashioned record label days. And also, at, during that time, as a mother and a founder um, and a businesswoman, I just felt, especially in the music industry, there was just no support for um, working mothers and mothers in the music. There was lots of women in music networking groups and support groups, so there was nothing for us um, mothers in music. So doing what I always do, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to create my own thing, basically. So I launched Mammy um, a few years ago on International Women's Day. And what we aim to do, we've got a, a huge community now, um, that we host. We host uh, uh, live events and virtual events. We had to do lots of virtual during the pandemic. But we're here to inspire and connect women. We have lots and lots of young women that come to our, our sessions, our networking events, sort of thinking about starting a family, but they're so scared um, because they don't think they can do the two. So we're, we're there to prove them wrong, basically. So back to my mission of inspiring and um, empowering um, artists, I'm actually proud to say that we're now in our sixth year in business. Um, we've worked with probably over 3,000 artists so far in that time. And we've worked with all sorts of artists, grassroots artists, right through to big household names and everyone in between. We've done so many things. We've, we've created virality for so many of our artists on TikTok, on Spotify. We've created opportunities for them on some of the biggest uh, radio stations across the UK. One thing I'm super proud of is some of the brand activations we've actually carried out. So during the pandemic, especially when artists could no longer perform, we actually t teamed up with the likes of Tezza Boohoo, River Island, and East Pack, and created live virtual opportunities for artists from the comfort of their own home, so they were still able to do what they loved, which was perform to fans and new fans. So that's something I'm so, so proud of. 
Another thing that I'm also so proud of is the community that I've created internally at Liberty. So at the moment, I've got a team of over 40 people. They're all over the world. Most of them are actually artists themselves. So they truly understand the intricacies and the delicacy of handling a campaign for an artist and how sensitive it is as well and how much there's so much anxiety that comes from the artist because essentially they're giving away their sort of baby. Um, so I'm really proud of that. So I've got quite a short talk actually looking at the time. <laughs> I'm almost at the end of my talk, but I think what I want to leave you guys with um, as a sort of lasting, uh, last statement is, especially for me, is I basically saw something that I really wanted to get into, and there was just so many closed doors. Everyone was shutting the door on me. Um, and one thing I did was I found something, so, I, you know, a field and an area. So if there's something that you really want to get into and that, you know, people are saying, you can't do it, you're too old, or you're never going to make it, find something that's broken, apply love, passion, grit and hard work, because it's a lot of hard work, I tell you. And I promise you, when you fix it, the whole world will want to know you. They'll want to come running. One of the biggest things that I'm so proud of now is the industry have truly embraced me and recognized me for my efforts. And I've won m many an award for my contribution. Um, and one thing I'm really proud of is next year, I've been invited to the Brit Award panel to become a judge for next year's um, entrance. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So that's it. That's my talk. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.